Russia's foreign agent law. No, it's not about spies and espionage and cloak and dagger counterintelligence skullduggery. It's about civil society groups and election monitors and charities and human rights groups. But these days, it's Russian journalists that are in the hot seat. The original 2012 legislation just targeted NGOs and rights groups, most of whom got funding from abroad. But since then, it's been broadened to target not only media organizations, but also individual journalists, YouTube bloggers, and, well, pretty much anyone else who receives money from outside of Russia. And, in the eyes of the Kremlin, voices a political opinion. Before we explain what this is all about, let's first tell the story of how it came to be. December 2011, Moscow saw some of its biggest political protests since the 1990s. They were motivated by claims that recent elections for the lower house of parliament, known as the State Duma, were rigged in favor of United Russia, the Kremlin-backed political party. Hillary Clinton, who was U.S. Secretary of State at the time, even called for a full investigation of all reports of fraud and intimidation. The Kremlin was livid. Vladimir Putin accused Clinton of meddling in Russia's internal affairs. Five months later, a new round of protests, this time on the day before Putin was inaugurated for his third term as president. Lots of arrests. The Kremlin was rattled, so it came up with some countermeasures. June 2012, the Duma passed new restrictions on protests and imposed heavy penalties for unauthorized demonstrations. That was just the beginning. A month later, the Duma broadened the law to target nonprofit organizations that receive money from outside Russia and that engage in quote unquote political activity. So, engaging in political activity, what is that exactly? Well, it's a pretty broad term. Exposing corruption? That's political activity. Monitoring elections? Yep, that too. Speaking up against environmental policies like, say, building trash landfills in pristine Arctic regions? You bet. Some of Russia's most prominent NGOs ended up on the official government register of foreign agents. Corruption watchdog Transparency International, Election Monitor Golos, the environmental group in Greenpeace Russia, all have relied for years on foreign grants to operate. Here's the thing about the term foreign agent. For many Russians, it has a strong association with Cold War era spy stuff. It carries a negative connotation, something like traitor. Once labeled, groups have to submit regular financial reports, and they have to identify themselves as foreign agents in all their publications and other materials. So what about journalists? As we said before, the law has been expanded to include a widening array of groups. In 2017, it was the media's turn in the hot seat. Designated media are supposed to submit financial reports to the government, but that's not the worst of it. They're obligated to label their reports and or include highly intrusive labels in their broadcasts or social media posts, like this. Forget to include the label? You'll be fined. A lot. More on that in a bit. The first outlets to be declared foreign agents were Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty, and several of its associated outlets, such as Current Time Television. Voice of America also got dinged. Just to be clear, RFERL is an independent, non-governmental corporation that happens to get funding from U.S. Congress. It is not run or controlled by the U.S. government. Since that time, more outlets have been added, including the independent Moscow TV channel Dost and the investigative media portal Projekt. Medusa, a Russian news website based in Latvia, also ended up on the list. So did the website V-Times. It was forced to shut down after advertisers were spooked by its foreign agent label, priving it of revenues. Others have refused to give up. Medusa lost many of its advertisers, but has survived, mostly thanks to a crowdsourcing campaign. RFERL, meanwhile, has refused to label its stories and broadcasts with a required disclaimer. As a result, Russia's media watchdog has fined it millions of dollars. Human rights groups say the label is clearly intended to discredit the work of anyone who tries to bring public attention to government misdeeds or who questions Kremlin policies. Russia's oldest and best known independent newspaper is Nova Gazeta. Its longtime editor, Dmitry Moratov, was a co winner of the 2021 Nobel Peace Prize. The paper and its editor have avoided the foreign agent label so far. Still, Putin warned them to stay in line. 
The Nobel Prize isn't a shield against the label, he said. Meanwhile, authorities have also gone after organizations that aren't even in Russia. Bellingcat, for example. The open source research organization has broken major stories about Russian intelligence agencies allegedly tracking and poisoning people, like Alexei Navalny. They don't even have a physical or legal presence in Russia. So why were they designated? We'll tell you in a sec. In 2020, the law was amended again, this time to allow the inclusion of individuals connected to NGOs or individual journalists or even lawyers. Galina Arapova is a prominent defense lawyer for journalists and media outlets. She was designated a foreign agent just hours after the Nobel Peace Prize was announced. Ivan Pavlov, he's one of Russia's best known defense lawyers. He ended up fleeing the country. He's a foreign agent now. For freelancers who work for media organizations, the law can be especially daunting. Being labeled as a foreign agent can make an individual toxic, making it hard to find new work or new collaborations. Listed individuals are also forced to label anything they publish, even their own personal social media posts, as the work of a foreign agent. And they have to submit quarterly financial reports. And here's another sneaky thing about the foreign agent law. If you reprint or rebroadcast something that was originally produced by a foreign agent, you have to label that information as coming from a foreign agent, even if you aren't a foreign agent yourself. That appears to be the reason why Bellingcat was designated. Russian news outlets who cite or reprint one of Bellingcat's bombshell reports have to label the information as coming from a foreign agent. Take the example of Echo Moskvi. They're a popular liberal-leaning radio station in Moscow. It got hit with fines because it didn't properly label information from a designated foreign agent. That would be Memorial, one of Russia's oldest and most respected rights organization. And the station isn't even a foreign agent itself. About a month after the Nobel Peace Prize announcement, authorities hit Novaya Gazeta with fines for failing to properly label foreign agents mentioned in their news coverage. Sneaky, huh? The latest blow came in September 2021. That's when Russia's main security agency published a 60-item list of topics that could lead to individuals being added to the foreign agent's register. You write about corruption at the Russian space agency Roscosmos? You could be added. You write about the hazing of military conscripts, a problem that's been around for decades. You could be added. You reveal the passport information of Russian intelligence hitmen on an assassination job traveling to Salisbury, England to see wonderful Gothic cathedral spires. Boom, added to the list. Clearly the goal is to keep a lid on scandals that have plagued Russia's military industrial complex in recent years. Not surprisingly, the Kremlin denies that the law is censorship. Putin often compares it to the US law on foreign agents, which was applied to RT, the TV channel formerly known as Russia Today, in 2016. It's a false comparison. The US law, which has been on the books for eight decades, does none of the things that the Russian law does. It certainly doesn't tell or force RT or any other foreign agent media organization to publish or label anything. Some Russian journalists are trying to highlight the absurdity of the law. Here's Denis Kamalyagin. He's the editor-in-chief of a newspaper in Northwest Russia. He himself was designated as a foreign agent in December 2020. This is what he did to highlight the law's problems. He tried to transfer money to some local elected officials from the United Russia political party. He then reported to the Justice Ministry that the officials had received funding from a foreign agent. He suggested that those officials should also be labeled themselves as foreign agents. As of the time of this video's publication, the Justice Ministry Registry has more than 180 entries on it. Just over half of those are journalists and media organizations. You can bet that number is only going to grow.